one. Uh, this is going to be a super, super, super Frank special today. That's going to be great. We're going to talk for like 10 minutes. That's going to be great. Ready, Rick? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Welcome, folks. Welcome to the SF Comic Book Company. This is SF Company Hour number 155. Uh, I am Ray Doomzilla, joined by the most effortist of Graceness, the Maximist, the Prime Prime Max, Max Effort Grayson, the, Rick, the Rickster himself. What's going on? Nothing much, man. <laughs> just just waiting for this Frank special, because I there's really not that much to talk not, about this week. Not much to talk uh, about. We are, we are going to talk about the Strays trailer uh, that just dropped a couple days ago. Uh, we'll talk about the AMC pricing uh, increase. Uh, I'm sure we both have some opinions on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, yeah, not, not really too much to talk about this week. There's not a lot of shit. Uh, how you doing, man? Good, bro. Yeah? Oh, yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. Just it's, yeah. A, it's a fun week, you know. I don't really get two days off in a row, but I treat Super Bowl as a fucking holiday, so. Yeah, it should be all. Even though I'm, I'm not excited about the game, <laughs> but I'm no, excited. I'm, dude, I'm more excited about you know, good. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm excited about Lumpia good times, and, good uh, friends, good food. Lumpia and wings. I'm excited. About. Yeah, I'll make so, some good. I'm gonna make some bomb wings. Uh, we'll see. We'll see, Rick. <laughs> I want to no, see your best. I want to see your best. Fucking talking uh, to the fucking Mysterio here. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you are what you eat, folks. I get, yeah, I got uh, the inside track. <laughs> Lori, what's up? Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday, Lori. Krista, good afternoon, nerds. Oh, yes, yeah, afternoon. Oh, well, it's still morning to me, damn it. Uh, all right. So, yeah, let's, uh, we did have a death. This uh, uh, was it the lady from Close Encounters. Um, oh, um, uh, Miranda. Uh, sorry, I'm just. God, why can't I remember her name? Uh, the mom from Christmas uh, Story. Yeah, Melinda. Uh, Melinda. Melinda. Dillon. Melinda yeah. Dillon. Uh, passed away this week. Uh, she died. Let's see. Yeah, she was born. Uh, oh, what does it say? Cindy. Oh, she was. Yeah, nineteen thirty nine. She was born. So she was, she was age eighty three. Um, you know, yeah. Of course, she was. Uh, you know, f- Close Encounters is probably what I you know know her most. That's one of my favorite movies. So I remember her from that. Uh, but yeah, like you said, Christmas Story. Um. Let's see. Yeah, and then uh, she loved bit roles here and there. She never really became like a big like. Yeah, you know, never really got a bit. Um, uh, slap shot. Uh, oh yeah, slap shot. She had a. Uh, she actually was not uh, nominated for best supporting actress for uh, in a uh, in a uh, close encounter. So that was cool. Um, and I think wasn't I think she was the mom in uh, uh Harry and the Hendersons too. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 She was uh, Harry and the Henderson, and yeah. after that it was kind of. Uh, she was in Magnolia and some like uh, some TV stuff, but nothing, nothing, nothing like crazy. So yeah, she, uh, yeah, nothing, nothing too crazy. But uh, R.I.P. to who ended up Dylan. But uh, what, what do you remember her mostly from? Christmas Story. Christmas Story, yeah. Christmas Story. That the, the phone call. I mean, she was like one of the best, like, movie moms like out there. Yeah. Like, she just know, always had that worried mom look on her face. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. she was good at that. But I just like the scene with her and when she's calling, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> what's his name? Uh, fucking uh, Schwartz's mom and starts telling her that that's where he heard the, the bad word from. And you could just see her reaction to the phone. And she's like, what the fuck's going on? And then she just <laughs> listens to him getting beaten and then just hangs it up like, <laughs> I think I messed up. That was, that's just great for me. I, I, I'll always remember her as uh, Ralphie's mom. Yeah, Mrs. Pa- Mrs. Parker. She's always gonna be Miss Parker. Miss Parker. Miss Parker. You wanna fuck Miss Parker? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what you say, honey? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's yeah. that's where I'll, I'll, for, I I like her. I love her in uh, Close Encounters. But anytime I just I see her face, the first thing that comes across is just you know her her winter gear or putting Randy in the big fucking uh, the morning suit to go to school. And I can't put your arms down when you get to school. No, 
that, that was <laughs> always the greatest. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah, no one. Uh, sorry, people, Linda. Uh, let's see what else. Um, yeah, this is, I'm, I'm looking at the <laughs> look at the news this week. It's nothing, man. There's uh, nothing there, man. It's it's yeah. this is it's probably going to be a news week where it's more bitching about anything than anything. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, uh, you know, we could do a yeah. Let's do a quick uh, knock at the cabin uh, review. We don't have to go into any spoilers, but what, yeah, what would you think of knock at the cabin? I, I like knock at the cabin, man. Uh, you know, it's uh, like other people have said on their podcast that M Night Shyamalan is either a guy that you, when you watch a movie, you either like it coming out or you hate it. It's just going to be one or the other. Yeah, you're not going. He's not in the middle, middle of the road. Like either it's. Uh, well, no. The, 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 so I'm finding I'm finding problems with because I I have a, I have a couple of groups when it comes to movies that I, I, I I'm with, and I hear I, I the horror movie people like well it wasn't scary enough I'm like it really wasn't supposed to be a scary yeah. movie no it's more so like, I, I, I don't know what you guys are expecting I understand you guys are the horror fanatics but it's not fucking Jason coming through and telling people that an apocalypse is coming it's not that kind of thing you know well i, I think people are like trained that if you see a movie with a cabin in it, it's supposed to be automatically a horror movie so you know yeah it's not yeah, even it's uh, uh if that if that's their if that's their thing you know it's just whatever i mean like um this is you're not the people that i'm going to ask for movie advice or ask your opinion on movies cuz you're, you're it means you're pretty fucking dense if that's what you're looking at so yeah, I thought. Yeah, I thought. Um, yeah, I liked it a lot. I, I didn't like. I won't say I liked it a lot, but I thought it was good. I, I thought the acting was good. I think um, this is definitely uh, Batista's best acting role. Uh, yeah, I didn't see him in Glass Onion. Was he was good in that too? Right? He was yeah, he was good in that. But he, he was okay. more playing, playing like a cartoon character in that. Uh, in that oh, movie. okay, that's easy for him. Yeah. So it was, yeah. So that. Was, that was not. Yeah, he was wasn't playing like a you know like so like a real acting job. Just kind of over the top kind of. Uh, kind of acting, but and this was more felt more stoic and very quiet, a quiet role. So, yeah, uh, uh, I liked his. You know, he was like that reserved kind of a teacher thing. Uh, I dug, I dug a lot of other people in the Jonathan Graff. That's my guy, man. I'm, I'm digging him as an actor. What, what who's he in? He he's from Mindhunter, the guy. Yeah, he from Netflix, the Netflix show from uh, David Fincher. Uh, okay, uh, he was also the. The version two of Agent Smith in, uh, okay. Yeah. yeah, okay, that's why I recognize him from. Okay. Yeah, so he's he's starting to come up. I hope his star brights shines bright. He's he's definitely got some acting chops. So he's somebody that I I'd like to see going forward do a lot more stuff. But yeah, I, I like the movie. I like Batista. Uh, the little girl was great. I think M like got some real good thing with uh. With kid actors, he knows how to work yeah. with kid actors really well. Yeah, he's very, uh, yeah, he's very Spielberg like in that in that regards. Like, you know, Spielberg's always been good at uh, directing actors, uh, directing uh, child actors. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I thought I thought it was uh, an interesting story, and then uh, you know, uh, it's you know, it wasn't like a major like twist, like you know, his usual films, uh, like his usual M Night ch- uh, twist. Yeah, but it, it was uh, it was like uh, da provoking. I like the visuals. I like the, the way we shot. The acting was good. Yeah, just so uh, yeah, I think it's uh, definitely on the spectrum of his better films. Uh, yep, yeah. and the other thing too is like, it, just because it's an M Night film, it doesn't have to have uh, like some kind of twist ending. Uh, I think that people make too much of a of a thing about that. If well, it comes, was, it comes. Well, if it doesn't, it doesn't. Well, you that have to look at the directing. He was caught. That was caught on him, though. He was fucking trying to out out clever himself in a lot of. Uh, no, I, uh, I get and, that. Yeah, but, but that's on him too. Like people expect a certain thing from a, a director, and you know. But he, I'm glad he's kind of shying away from that. He, you well, know, he, that's because you know, that's his that's his work that he's doing. That's what people don't trip on. The work that he does, like that, it's his work that he wrote. That's when he starts trying to get too clever, and where people need to expect things from him. I get, I get that criticism, but this is something completely different than what he's ever done. He's working with somebody else's, somebody else's property. Yeah, and, that, yeah, that's and that's to me. That's the way he needs to start going. Yeah, he he can't. He, he's he's kind of like J.J. Abrams in that sense. Well, he I tried don't want to do you, I don't want you directing your own shit. Just yeah. direct somebody else's stuff that's actually good. You know, not, if not you, Avatar though. Huh? No, like, uh, like th- that was a thing with Tarantino. Like, my favorite film when it comes to Quentin, dude, I love Jackie Brown. That's probably my favorite movie because it's not like 
yeah. anything else that he does. Yeah, it's I Quentin Tarantino it, doing a movie of, of somebody else's work. Yeah, I think uh, Reservoir Dogs is probably my favorite. Yeah, uh, but for the comparison that I'm making is yeah, he's it's Quentin Tarantino is doing Quentin Tarantino almost everything else, probably except Jackie Brown. Same thing with like uh, I think Devil. I'm not sure if he I think I think he produced he only he produced, produced Devil. Devil. Yeah, he didn't. Yeah, he, he didn't. didn't he didn't direct it. But like the stuff that he looks like he's if he takes a, sh- a chance at shit. That he's not writing. I can. I want to see more of that. I want to see what else M Night got. Like, let him do a fucking, like a, uh, I don't know, like a murder movie or some shit. Yeah. You know. Like, what was that yeah. movie with Michael Caine? Like, where he was like calling people up and. Oh, um, dr- the the dr- dress, dress to kill. To kill? Yeah. yeah. See, I would like to see M Night direct something like that. Mm. You know that I think that's where he he lies. But for him to do. Don't get mad if people can't get mad about you know. Oh, well, there wasn't really that much of a twist. It's like he didn't write it, all right? Somebody else wrote it. Yeah, you don't need a twist every fucking movie, man. You, you, you really don't. You really don't. And then you're kind of setting yourself up for uh, you know, kind of failure too. <laughs> I feel like if people are going to expect it and not, and it's not going to happen, then you well, know. we already we already got failed so many times. You know, I I, I hate the village. You village, know, yeah, I fucking can't. That I movie, hate the I, village. I movie, actually, yeah. I actually liked Lady in the Water. Yeah. It's it's interesting well, I, and it's something I liked, new. I liked some of some of it, but then he, I think he injected too much of himself in that movie. That's what I think. That's where it kind of fails. And me. that's where people fall. And that's where another pe- people don't like him. I I don't mind somebody throwing himself into a movie. Oliver yeah. Stone used to do that shit. Yeah. Tarantino you know? did it. Like, Tarantino, Tarantino does it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he, he just got it's he was getting a little too full of himself when he's being put on like you know Time magazine as the next Spielberg and all this shit and like kind of got too yeah next yeah. Hitchcock yeah like it was he was uh, feeling himself a little bit too much yeah settle settle down a little bit I agree with that yeah <laughs> um, but he but, but, yeah. but this one was pretty good this one yeah. was was pretty good uh, where would you rank it in the the Shyamalan verse uh, uh, like, what, what's your, see, give me a top Give me your top uh, four Shyamalan movies. Uh, well, I'm going to be biased because this is SF Comic Book Co. <laughs> Split's probably my favorite movie that he's done. Wow. Split is absolutely amazing. It's an uh, amazing performance from uh, James McAvoy. Uh, it's fucking dope. Then the reveal at the end that it's a sequel to that, like inadvertent, like chapter two to something is fucking even more phenomenal. Uh let me see. After that, I would probably say Unbreakable. Unbreakable is probably number uh, number two. Number three would probably be Knock at the Cabin. Mm. Uh, number four would be Sixth Sense. You know, I I, I, I get it's like, well, oh, you didn't know he was a. It, that doesn't matter. The twist to to me doesn't make the movie. Uh, it kind of ruined the movie for me. Like, yeah, the twist yeah. doesn't make the movie for me. Yeah, they, getting the twist spoiled for me kind of ruined it for me. Watching the movie, kind of like, oh, yeah. they, they kind of like that. that if you, knowing that twist going in, kind of ruined it for me. And then but, you can uh, see how they, how he's, you know, acting throughout the whole movie. That's why that's yeah. a, it's a good thing though, because that's kind of those things that, if you don't know, it makes you want to watch the movie twice. Yeah. See, I like. I would love to saw it like clean and then then watch it again but now i got got ruined for me by two little girls on a fucking muni bus uh but you know oh well uh yeah i would go uh, so i'm a big fan of science i love science that's probably my oh favorite. you know what i totally forgot about science, science is great yeah uh, science. just because of that you, you're right i'm dropping fucking what's it called out of my <laughs> number four signs goes number four Okay. I forgot right. about yeah. Mel Gibson and Joaquin Phoenix had great fucking performances. That movie's that. great. That, that scene where the fucking alien pops out of the fucking bush is just still fucking like ah, like unnerved me. <laughs> the little kid screaming in Portuguese still fucking gets me. <laughs> You're going hella crazy. <laughs> yeah, I love uh, it. Yeah, that was good. Uh, that was a good scene. Uh, yeah, the opening credits is fucking amazing too. I love the credits for that. Uh, yeah, I would say yeah, uh, yeah, Unbreakable. I'll probably put up there. Um. And go through his fucking movie list. Uh, yeah, split split was pretty good. I'll, I'll put split up there split too. It was great, man. Um, I still haven't seen uh the uh Mr. Gla- the glass glass one. Yeah. glass is okay. It's uh it's just I, it, I it's what I expected out of M Night Shyamalan movie. Like good good first second act, shitty third act. Yeah. So yeah. 
Uh, yeah, so yeah, Shaman, you know, he's he's a talented filmmaker, but he, he definitely kind of goes off the rails. But not a knock of the cabin was good, I, I thought it was a very enjoyable uh flick, good acting, good uh, good movie wise. Uh, so yeah, uh, go watch it, give him a chance. I know a lot of people don't shit on Shyamalan, but he, he's, a, he's a good filmmaker, he, he's kind yeah. of right, right in the wrong. I sound I've seen old yet, but I need, I need to watch that one too. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are like very like either you like it or you hate it. <laughs> I'm that person that's fucking teetering on the ledge, wanting to jump, but not sure if I yeah. should. Yeah, with, with that one. It's it's some parts of it are good. Some parts of it are really just like, oh, God, you're, you're overthinking shit. Yeah. Uh, Danny, what's up, Danny? Greetings and salutations. What's Hello, up, brother. Danny? Hey, he's my brother. He's my brother. <laughs> uh, Lori, uh, Jonathan Groff was in Glee as well. Yeah, we won't talk about that. We'll keep that off of his resume. Yeah. That doesn't, it doesn't I watched the first, uh, first couple seasons of Glee. Yeah, it was kind of fun. I'm, I'm a kid who did musicals in high school. It's just, it, I don't have a problem with the, the, the show. I have a problem with some of the way the cast acted and acts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like yeah. They're, they're they're dickheads. Like they're yeah, they're Michelle. legit assholes. Yeah. Yeah, I was watching some video about the uh, uh, Leah Michelle. Yeah, she's a bitch. Yeah, she's a fucking uh, prick. Yeah, I like uh, what was it the the Britney chick I had a crush on her. Uh, Jonathan Groff was also a Broadway actor. He was uh, in Hamilton. Also looking on HBO. Right. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Jonathan Groff. I, I, yeah. I, I I'd love to see if they have have him in like he's not in the Hamilton movie, but but I'm I'm is he in the Hamilton movie? I don't know. I haven't seen it. But uh, I still need to watch that. Yeah, the Broadway film. actors are great when it comes to transferring to to movies. Yeah, you know? They, you know that's their act. You know that's their acting school and shit. So yeah, they, you know they get that's playing in front of a live crowd really helps uh, helps your uh, acting chops. Uh, what's up, Renee? Uh, yo, what's up? Uh, hello, diehard faithful comics horror fantasy and sci fi empire community. Yeah, that should be on a t shirt. No, uh, no. Let's see. Uh, the Simone, do you play the Aquaman quit the Rook Crow reboot? Uh, that's old. that's that's super old news. What's yeah. his name is attached to it right now is uh, Bill Skarsgård. Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah, I, mean, uh, be, I, I look at the face and I, I, yeah, I can see it. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Uh, Hondo, Honda Lorian. Of all the dangers of riding Muni, <laughs> Muni the getting movie spoiled. Sorry, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What 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 happened? He, so that's how you got it spoiled. Yeah, or... it was, uh, six cents. I was riding Muni, and so these two little girls like, "Oh my god, I can't believe he was dead the whole time." That was the you thing. Stupid. Like, hell out loud. Like, uh, that's, like yeah. Just, that's when I it turned into Chucky. You stupid bitch. Like, it was like the week it came out too. It wasn't like it was like oh, this is like a couple months after. No, it was like the week. They were like hell out loud too. These two like young little uh, chicks. I was so pissed, you, man. <laughs> you stupid daikini. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh so let's get to uh this trailer that dropped uh, i i never i haven't didn't hear anything about this tr- uh, movie at all didn't know this was a thing uh but this the trailer dropped i was like uh will ferrell i'm kind of anti will uh, will ferrell i'm not the biggest will ferrell fan i think he's done two good movies uh maybe two and a half good movies uh but uh this this trailer dropped uh Fucking hilarious, man! I, you know, a rated R dog talking movie. I'm, I'm, I'm there. Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, if you haven't seen this trailer, watch it. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a rated R dog talking fucking movie. Like I, I don't think we've ever had a rated R uh, animal movie like this. This, this uh, kind of feels like what's it called? Uh, kind of like sausage party in a way but for the yeah. anime for the talking dogs or yeah the, like sausage party but this looks like uh, sausage party it, it should be funny though like unlike sausage party with yeah it was not funny it was just it was just it was just, was just so crass funny. it was just crass it was just yeah i, I was so ex- excited like animated r-rated oh this is gonna be hilarious it was like yeah the jokes kind of fell flat uh but uh this uh from the trailer this looks fucking hilarious um uh, it's got a great cast: Will Ferrell, Jamie Fox. Um, uh, <laughs> if you haven't seen this trailer, you got to watch it because it's fucking it's funny. Uh, it, you know the plot is basically uh, this dog. Uh, well, Forte plays the, the human. He like leaves his dog. Uh, you know, 
uh, he wants to get rid of his dog when the dog keeps coming back. So he moves, uh, drives into the city and drops him off. And <laughs> it basically, it's a revenge uh, road movie. Well, well, Forte is hilarious in those opening scenes, dude. Yeah, so he wants uh, revenge. He's going to bite his uh, his owner's dick off. <laughs> so that's the plot of the movie. He's going to go back and uh, uh, bite his owner's dick off. Uh, this trailer... Uh, Emmy dying when the fucking little Boston Terry gets swooped on by the fucking hawk. <laughs> it was just fucking. Hilarious. This movie looks like uh, uh, between this and Cocaine Bear, man. This is the year of uh, animals uh, getting uh, getting knife. Uh, but yeah, what do you think of this trailer? Fucking hilarious. It kind of reminded me of like Look Who's Talking Now, but that's being a family movie. This being a st- straight up, just fucking raunchy ass comedy. I, I miss raunchy ass comedies, man. Yeah, like I want, I want more of them. Yeah, that uh, hasn't been a good comedy in a little while, man. Yeah, well, the rated R comedy, the rated R comedies, yeah. because people are afraid of the, you know, the box office, and if it doesn't do well, just, just make a good movie. If you make a good movie and you make it funny as shit, it's gonna do well. Yeah. So like, you know, some of some of the funniest, funniest movies, uh, uh, some of the funniest movies, uh, you know, in the nineties were PG thirteen, you know, like you know, Dumb and Dumber and fucking. Uh, uh, Ace Ventura. But if you think about it, with before, dude, I remember before PG thirteen was a thing. So what would those movies be now? Would they be if there wasn't a PG thirteen to begin oh, yeah. with? Would they be yeah, PG yeah. or would they be rated R? It would probably be rated R for sure. Yeah, T- titties and uh, titties and cursing. Yeah, well, okay. cursing mainly now or explosions. Oh, we can't be so violent. Like you guys need to relax. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, let's see, Lori. Uh, if Strays and Cocaine Bear were a double, double feature, that we had. <laughs> yeah, uh, that'd be, yeah, that'd be great. Too bad, yeah. yeah, double feature would be awesome. Yeah, this is coming out in the summer. Uh, yeah, this looks hilarious. I, yeah, I, I kind of, I kind of don't want to watch any more trailers. Like, uh, I'm, I'm done watching trailers because uh, uh, they're going to give away the big, the big get, laugh. Yeah, I don't want to. Like, I, you know, certain movies I go into, I see the trailer and trailers, and and I get everything like kind of. Like everything's kind of spoiled for me, so like I don't like I, I'm trying to be good about watching tra- uh, multiple. Uh, the first tra- if you have me at the first trailer, I'm good. I don't need to see any more. Like I don't want to see any more uh, cocaine bear trailers or anything like that. I'm I'm, I'm you sold me. You had me Dude, a, a cocaine bear. I just want to hear more white lines and fucking uh, in trailers. <laughs> uh, getting higher, baby. Uh, getting higher, baby. Well, we'll never calm down. Free base. Uh, all right. Yeah. So yeah, this is, uh, this is, uh, this is, uh, high on the list. Uh, yeah. Like I, I heard nothing about this movie at all. And this is uh, produced by Lord and Mer- uh, Miller too. So they they get a they got a good track record uh, for comedy. All right. All right. Cool. All right. Uh, let's see. All right. Let's go. Uh, all right. Let's talk about this. Why is Leo cool? Talk about uh, what? Hey, Leo, you're live on the SF Combo Co. How can I help you? Yeah, you're live on the SF Combo Co. Yeah. What's up, Leo? Yeah, we're, we're doing. My bad, my bad. We're doing the show. Man. <laughs> my bad. My bad. <laughs> uh, I'll tell y'all later. <laughs> <laughs> you want, hey, you don't want to promote the show? Yet? Closer to the mic. Closer to the mic. Uh, let's say I'll post a link. Uh, we'll be definitely talking about the Super Bowl, uh, the impact of the uh, trades with the Warriors. Uh, check us out. All right, go Dirty Bastards. Check them out. All right. <laughs> there you go. That's how you. That's how you make some content right there. <laughs> uh, all right. Unexpected guest. <laughs> Unexpected guest. Uh, Let's see. Uh, blah, 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 blah. All right. So yeah, let's talk about the this uh, this AMC thing. Uh, so AMC uh, came out this week, and this has been kind of rumored for a while that the the, the uh, I knew this was going to come. The, the, this was only a matter of time. I think uh, this this probably would have happened sooner if pandemic didn't happen. Uh, I think they would have uh, definitely tried to uh, force this on uh, force this on people. Uh, so this is uh, from uh, Bleeding Cool. Uh, M- uh, AMC introduces sightline to charge more for certain seats. Uh, Let's see. Uh, uh, AMC is introducing a new dynamic pricing model to the theaters called Sightline at AMC. Basically, it is a way for them to charge more for the best seats in the auditorium. The worst seats, worst seats are say, say, or should I say, less desirable will cost less. The pricing was thought with showings coming uh, Friday. So, Chicago, New York, Kansas City, 
uh, which expansion come into every screen uh, chain by the end of the year. Uh, so yeah, there are three tiers. Standard sightline for all common seats, but will we'll remain at the normal cost. Value sightline uh, for front rows and ADA uh, tickets at reduced cost and only available to the Stubbs members. The, and preferred sightline for the middle theater seats where everyone will see, uh, will see an upcharge. A-list members can reserve preserve, uh, preserve seats with no additional cards cost. So this is, I think this is also a ploy to like have people like start getting that AMC, uh, uh, their, their movie pass thing too, because that's, uh, that's going to be a big, uh, uh, that's going to be a big thing. Uh, the, this, I, I don't like the fact that like basically you're, you're basically saying, oh, the poor people are going to have to stand on the sides and, uh, poor people are going to have to sit in the front. Like, and, oh, you, if you're going with a family of like, you know, four or five people, you're gonna have to go for the bargain. You can't go for the fucking uh, premium seats because oh sorry, we, those are the better people over there. We can't sit over there. Uh, I, I think it's kind of uh, it's kind of messed up, but uh, we saw this coming for a while, and I I, 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 I guarantee other uh, stu- uh, other uh, theaters are gonna do this. Uh, the only problem is like we're people are not really going to the movies like they used to. Uh, there's a lot of options. There's not like a lot of people, and a lot of people can just stay home, and order a movie, and watch it at home, and be comfortable. So it's not uh, like what, what you're trying to charge people more, but that is, this is going to alienate a lot of people going to the theater. They're going to see this and like it's a price gouge, whatever. Uh, you know, I'll probably I'll pay for the uh, 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 premium because I would like I like sitting in the middle of the theater. Like, uh, but it sucks that we have to pay a little bit more. Uh, this is just going to make me want to go on those uh, cheaper Tuesdays and like you know kind of pick and choose where I go see a movie. Like I, you know, the only reason I go see AMC movies is because I work across the street from one. So it's convenient to go see a movie uh, at AMC, but yeah, I don't really, not a big fan of, uh, you know, going to um, uh, AMC theaters if they're going to kind of pull this kind of crap. Uh, but it's, it's business and uh, it's going to alienate a lot of people and they're, I can see them losing money off of this. Uh, but what do you think, man? Oh, this is total bullshit. It's total bullshit. So I, if this is the case, I'd rather go back to the days of waiting in line for my seat. Oh, I don't want to go that um, that far. <laughs> I, I, no, I, no, I would because that gives me anxiety it, thinking about trying to like get seats and waiting. No, line. if I'm 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 in the front of the, I'm usually that guy who's closer to the front of the line. Uh, I would be the guy waiting in the line. <laughs> no, yeah, but that's the whole thing. I, I, if that was if that's the case, I'd rather go back to that. I don't want to have to pay more. I'm already paying more. I got service charges when I fucking buy them online or online fees. Like, dude, they tack on fees everywhere they fucking can. And this is just another way to do it. Mm-hmm. Good thing is I'm not going to be going to AMC. I, I I hardly go to AMC to begin with right now. Like, the only time I would go to AMC is I beg whoever is going to open a, a theater in San Francisco, any theater chain that's coming to the city or coming into the Bay Area, you need an IMAX screen. You need a legit IMAX screen to have at your theater because uh, I think that's the only reason I would go to the Metreon is because they have IMAX and it's a true IMAX theater. I don't, I don't want to go to, uh, I don't want to go to this theater chain if they're going to do that. Mm. If, and if other theater chains follow suit, so be it. Uh, I have options. I can watch movies at home. All it's going to do is going to increase more pirating. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. Gonna, you, you, like uh, I'll go to the draft house. They won't yeah. do this. I guarantee you, the draft house won't do this. Yeah, yeah. Well, their their premiums are their fucking forty dollars hamburgers. <laughs> no, well, that, that, but hey, I would. Uh, it's good food. I yeah. would rather pay for good food. Look, they're and it, that's not absolving other theaters from their fucking concession prices. Their concession prices are out of. They're they're getting out of hand. Yeah, they're ridiculous. Yeah. For so just, yeah, want, like, popcorn I would, soda. Yeah. I would rather go to I would rather go to the draft house and pay for my regular seat and know that they're going to kick out the asshole who is, you know, talking or whatever. Then go to AMC where half the time I go to that theater anyway, you got somebody talking. You got yeah. somebody thinking I like I need their commentary on this fucking movie that we're watching. Like I don't care for it. I don't yeah. really need to hear it. Shut the fuck up and just watch it, yeah, you know. Right. Like, yeah, laugh when you laugh when people laugh, cheer when people cheer. That's cool. But I don't want to hear your commentary, you know, when your 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 other comes over and is just like, 
so what's going on? Like, <laughs> if you need to walk out the theater right now and get this movie on Blu-ray, if you want to have that question. Yeah, watch it's it. Just, yeah, it's just going to make me, like, be very particular, um, very particular uh, about certain movies I go see. Like, I'll go see the Marvel movies, any Star Wars movie, and big event movie, Strays, I can even see it in the theater, you know, I want to see what a, a group of people. But for, like, you know, for smaller movies, I, like, I go, I go in the day. I wouldn't have seen nobody on the screen if this was the case. Like yeah. that movie's great, but, but yeah, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have taken a chance. Let me go. Let me go watch Nobody. Let me yeah. go watch Knock at the Cabin. You know uh, the marginal movies are going to be off to the side now. Yeah, it's like I, I can wait. I don't want to like it's too much of a hassle like to go to a fucking theater now. Like if if it's, it's like they're charging, uh, you know, up the ass for all this shit. Uh, but uh, it's I've always got Netflix. Yeah, got great yeah. original movies too. Yeah, and then like and, and the turnaround for movies are so quick nowadays to like go to streaming and you know like like before it was like some movies you'd had to wait a year for it to a come year. out. Yeah, I remember Jurassic Park took like a year to come out on VHS, and it was like you know these movies you know would it would be a long time before you see these movies. Now it's like forty five days. Like like I wanted to watch the menu and like oh like I, I missed out on a scene in the theater and it was popped up on HBO. I was like oh shit it's on HBO already. All right cool like <laughs> or you can even or you can even ask, catch uh, movies that premiere online. You got Halloween Kills. Like see that like ho- like the Halloween series. The first one if I saw it at home I would have been like all right let me go see this in the theater. Yeah. But the fact that they release it at home. I'm just like, yeah, I'm not gonna go watch this shit. Yeah, after the second one, I was like, you know what? I'm a, I'm not no, watching this no. in the theater. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm just, not oh, watching wow. this in the theater. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I, I feel that. So I, I yeah, pray, pray. I would watch in the theater. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. would have watched Pray in the theater. Yeah. There's a lot of movies that came out like Netflix and Amazon Prime. A lot of original stuff. I don't know if you got to see Love and Monsters. Love and Monsters, I would have saw in the theater. Mm. Yeah, we saw Co- uh, Kong versus Go- uh, Godzilla versus Kong, and like I, I would have. That was like when pandemic was kind of like. Uh, uh, but you know, it was jump. It was on HBO, and so you know, shit. I can just watch it at home. Uh, Big Leo, uh, just uh, just get uh, get recliner chairs, less seats, premium menu of drinks. I think a lot of theaters just need to do that. Like you want, you want, you know, charge a little bit extra. Uh, give me a comfy fucking recliner. Give me fucking food service. Give me my. I agree know, with that. Yeah, you want, you know, you want to make more money. You'll get more bang for your buck. And uh, the, and when you have those recliner seats, there's really not a bad seat in the house. Really, you can fucking. Uh, a lot of those theaters have great, like, there's no real, like, maybe, like, up front, yeah, but for the most part, all those seating, the seating's actually nice. It's almost like we went to go watch AEW in the theater. Like, I, I like their setup. Was that, that's an AMC, right? Uh, Cinemark. Uh, oh, Cinemark. Yeah, I think it's Cinemark. Yeah, so yeah. I like the way yeah, their setup was. Know. <laughs> you know, that's, that, the way that setup was is perfect. It's, yeah. uh, you know, I don't need, what they really need to do is work on, that open area in the front where they're putting all seats that nobody wants to sit in, turn that into some kind of sound system. Yeah. You know, yeah, some, no, no, yeah no one buys a fucking, no, no one nobody buys seat. that fucking, that, you know, that neck killer, neck killer seat. And yeah, and movie, there's so many options out too. Like, how many movies have you been to recently where it's like sold out, packed? Like, it's the Cineplexes that are fucking it up too. There's so, there's so many options. There's so many theaters. Like, it's like, dude, like, don't charge more, like make better seating, make fucking, you know, make it more convenient for people, not try to alienate fucking people. No, trying to alienate the pores, man. Jeez. Uh, Lori, as long as you can still have uh, theaters like Roxy, Babo, and other small theaters, I will still go to the theater. Uh, yeah, I like I like it having it all. I want the big, you know, IMA, you know, big, nice screens and IMAX, big sound system and the small, like, you know, mom and pop theaters, like the small, you know, like the. I just wish those small mom and pop theaters did a little bit more upkeep on their theater. Yeah, like I love I, the I, I, they're, 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 they still have the same seats as. <laughs> I, I love I love the eighties, but I don't want to fucking step on the same shit that's on the same carpet from the eighties in those fucking theaters. Oh, just like part of the charm, it's sticky as I'm walking, just like, <laughs> like I, I don't want to hear man. that. I don't want to feel that on the bottom of my feet. It's part of the charm, man. No, no, yeah. it's just I it, I would I would visit those theaters. Like I think that's why I love the the Alamo so much. It's I have a lot of great memories there beforehand, and I can see that they really kept the aesthetic and are maintaining it. Like yeah, yeah, you know they're keeping it like a modern theater, but still treating it like the old school thing that it is. Yeah, uh, Sh- uh, Renee Shin Alterman was freaking phenomenal at uh, AMC Lowe's Metreon. Uh, that would have been yeah. sick to watch. Yeah, I, oh, I, I wanted to watch that. IMAX screen though. 
Uh, I think it was in the regular screen. Uh, okay. Yeah, they did like a, a fa- I think it was a Fathom events. They showed up. Uh, uh, Ultra. Uh, yeah, I missed out on seeing it in the theater. I want to check it out. I heard it was, I heard it was pretty good. Uh, but yeah, see, that, like you know, it should be special going to the theater, man. But it, it, and I'm I'm just gonna be more picky. I've already been doing that already, being more picky about what the, what movies I want to see in the theater. Uh, so it's but I, I I love going to movies, man. I love like sitting in a theater, you know, a darkened theater and watching a movie. Yeah, like I go by myself. <laughs> you know, so uh oh yeah, uh Renee brings up Avatar. Uh yeah, so I haven't seen uh four hours plus Avatar movie uh, in three D. Uh we just saw it the other day. Uh you, know you gotta see it in three D too. IMAX three yeah, D. Uh, IMAX three D and uh you know I am glad we waited to see it on the uh, IMAX because that's the way, uh, that's the way Cameron intended. And you know, that's uh um uh, it should be a uh, you know special when you go to a movie like that. It should be a, a special thing, and you know, I think AMC is just I, they're gonna lose people, man. And I, I hope yeah, this fails. Me. I hope it this fails so other uh, companies be like, oh, maybe we shouldn't do that. Uh, maybe we shouldn't like try to charge people extra for uh, you know uh, uh, for a middle. Uh, but I think this is more of a push to get the people to get the uh, AMC uh, the fucking little their little app. Well, um, I feel I feel bad for folks who live close or work close to AMC's in your in your like situation, because me I. I I don't think I've gone to an. I, I don't go to AMC Century Twenty in Daly City. It's a horrible theater, horrible that's, setup. That's not, that's not Century Ten. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's an that's an AMC. The Century Ten. Um, the 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 theater in Daly City next to the bar station. That's an AMC theater. Oh really? I don't think so. That's an AMC theater. Uh no, it's a Century. It's a Century theater. Hmm. Yeah. So what are the AMC's here? Uh, the Kabuki. Uh, I used to go there. Don't go there anymore. Uh, Kabuki and uh, Metron. That's it. Yeah. Oh, well, in San Francisco, they're fucked then. <laughs> <laughs> both both of those theaters are downtown. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, we'll go for IMAX, but I have I have what Regal Stonestown. Yeah, uh, really, yeah, pretty much Alamo and I got uh, the Stone Alamo. Town. I got the Balboa up the street if I want to see something that they got. You know, these these megaplexes, unless you're the only theater in town, like, yeah, you'll do good. But in the city, these guys are fucked. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, it, they have what? So you said just two of them. Yeah, they're, they have, that, that won't fly. <laughs> yeah. That won't fly. Yeah, I think, yeah. It, it's so many options. And uh, uh, you have the. Yeah, but we needed something like that again. We need something like the Coronet to come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One one beautiful screen, beautiful, huge opening. I used to love that you could walk up uh, uh, onto the second, the second rising behind. You know, after you come out the doors and you can just turn your corner and then you just go up the steps to the, the next seats above there. Like I used to love that, but yeah, they don't have they don't have theaters like that anymore. I wish they did. Cornet was that was the best. <laughs> That's the premier theater. Uh, oh, my, oh my god you guys got me excited i got to go see avatar too. it's it's good man. It's, uh, yeah i wasn't a huge fan of the first one uh i i, I liked it in the theater but watching it at home i was just saying eh, whatever without the bells and whistles uh but this one was uh, the, the it's a beautiful movie man yeah the, the cg's exceptional cg's top notch the visuals are really good uh the um yeah no it's it's it's, it's, it's definitely go see it on imax 3d if you're gonna see it watch it on the yeah uh, yeah, I talked to some people that didn't watch it like in 3D or in a IMAX. And I was like, uh, I, I, like a Hondo said he saw it uh, like on a regular screen. I was mm-hmm. like, oh. yeah, uh, you guys see it on the watch IMAX. it again. Yeah, watch it again. Like, uh, watch yeah, it again if you're on the. I was like, watch it with the bells and whistles, and then like it definitely enhances. It. It, it, it's like they're not really even movies, really like a, a standard movie. It's just kind of a, like a like almost like a, a ride, like a theme park ride. Like this is a, a three hour theme park ride. Uh, so you know, yeah, you, you need you need the bells and whistles for it. Like it probably like I probably won't watch this at home because it won't have the same experience, and I I don't want to taint my love <laughs> love of it. Oh, you know. but it's a beautiful movie, man. The ocean stuff is really nice, nicely done. You know the one thing that kept on thinking after seeing that movie, if I could have like one wish, it for fucking be James Cameron to d- direct like a giant mech movie, like. Voltron or fucking uh, Robotech. Remake, uh, remake Robot Jocks. <laughs> By him, it would be great because you do you see like how 
whoever he hires to like work with him on like mech design and you know like function is fucking awesome dude like it, it just i want to see him direct some kind of fucking giant mech movie like well I, preferably be robotech for me i would love robotech by james cameron because he, he does that shit right he, he's got ever since what uh aliens when you see the big you know the, the battle at the end with the with the loader so uh uh he's been doing that shit right oh that's a great movie man i, I really like that so but yeah what, any other theater need, you need to build an imax theater in the city yeah so what, what, like all right what's your best situation for a movie like what would you have like a rick's rick's building a theater uh what, what what would you what would you what would you be all your accoutrements what would be your seating style what would be your like what what would be rick's theater uh my well i like the old school seating styles kind of like the coronet and the um the old new mission how you would have like the balcony seating yeah i do i do like that because that like see i would charge more for balcony seating and that's the one thing i kind of do like about the kabuki i like a balcony seating you get to sit down below or you get to sit up high so one of one of those two things. What kind of scene? I, would, I wouldn't well, have a, I wouldn't have five screens. I think I'd have if, at most two. Yeah, have the smaller one, and I would have a bigger one, like the big event one, and like the small for like the indie, like the indie theater, indie section, and like the big event movies. You know. Yeah, like I would have one regular screen, one IMAX screen. Pref maybe, like you know how like tall the coronet is, you could have like an elevator go to the second floor and and get you you know just white way bigger view um uh, my seating would be yeah kind of like kind of like the coronets i love that setup the you got the pit down below you know the band pit where you have all your seats just regular style and then you have that next rise uh where you would come out the concession doors from the concession stand the concessions right in the middle i would have drinks at the theater you have to have drinks these days mm. um yeah, that'd be sick. Yeah, yeah. I, I would, I would like recliner seats for me. I like you know, a, a comfortable recliner seats, not like the weird rickety ones. Uh, yeah, definitely want to have that. Good. Uh, I would have a popcorn holder and a, a soda holder. I want a popcorn holder on my seat, <laughs> so I can put like a bucket of popcorn right next to me. Yeah. So you okay. could do that like with the fucking what's it called tray, like the trays that they have on the airplanes. No, I don't like those fucking trays, man. <laughs> I want a no, big but, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Well, the thing is, no, because it, it slides in into the chair. It pops up out, you yeah. know? Yeah. 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 Just like, give me a good sound system. Give me a good, nice, clean screen. Uh, I, I like, yeah, no talking, no uh, uh, Alamo Draft House, pretty much. Alamo Draft House rules. Yeah. Alamo Draft House. Uh, basically, Alamo Draft House with a uh, recliner. Cornet. Re re recliner. Yeah. Merge the, mer merge all the uh, good shit. But yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll win that billion dollars and we'll make our uh, theater uh, happen. Coronet 2, Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> or since I saw it there, I'd be like, Coronet 2, When Nature Calls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's just, uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how this plays out. Uh, I, don't, I don't, if it's success, successful for them, I can see other theaters uh, adopting this, but uh, hopefully it's not, uh, uh, hopefully, uh, Hopefully it doesn't uh doesn't catch on. I think that this is. I don't think it will. I, I think, think this is going to go kind of like the um, like the Netflix, what's it called, password sharing thing? Because it looks like they're scrapping it. Yeah. They got wind of how much they're going to lose because of it, and I think this is what's going to happen with MC. That I think this is just. I'm hoping they just threw the 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 bait out there to see if fish are biting, and if they all fucking swim away, they're going to pull it back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we'll see, man. Uh, uh, I hope I hope it fails. Uh, all right, uh, like the video if you uh, if you're uh, enjoying the content. Uh, like, share, subscribe to the channel. Turn on the notification bell. Uh, we uh, try to do this mostly Saturdays, but sometimes a Tuesday. It depends on the the work week. But uh, like and subscribe. Like the video. Help the algorithm. All that good shit. Uh, all right. Now it's working. Oh, my fucking computer's acting phony. I gotta. Uh, I don't know, I hope I, I don't know.
I got to get a new computer this year. Uh, Jose, what's up, Jose? Uh, do you guys watch UFC? Yeah, uh, on occasion, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I try to catch it when yeah. I can. I usually have to work Saturday, so I usually miss like the pay per views and stuff. But I, 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 to... I, I don't mind missing the pay per views because some of the fights on the undercards are these up and comers that they fucking they're they fucking just throw out and beat the yeah. shit out of each other. Yeah, I like watching uh, I like watching uh, 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 the undercard and stuff. Uh, yeah, there's, yeah. I forgot what was the one like last year was so good. I think the one like right 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 when pandang- pandemic was ending. <laughs> Pandango. Pandango. <laughs> Uh, pandemic was ending. Uh, uh, that was a great card, man. That card, card was like, yeah. I, love, I just uh, remember when yeah. fucking Thug Rose Nama Eunice was beating the shit out of the fucking. Uh, oh yeah, I think that might have been that, that one. That might have been that one. She was kicking yeah, the shit out of her. Great. That was great. Yeah, that she top, was supposed to be the undefeated. Top, top to bottom, that that card was fucking insane. That was great. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. Those guys fight, fight a lot. Yeah. They, those guys fight a lot harder. Yeah. They, they're, they're, they're usually the main event's kind of underwhelming. Uh, it's kind of a like uh, like that's why they give you like what seven bouts throughout yeah, the whole day. Yeah, you know? it's, it's it's pretty satisfying. Like boxing's kind of hit and miss sometimes when you get the undercard. They, they usually have like some shit fights and like fucking dude. Kinda... Boxing boxing hasn't been good for the past maybe ten years because of promoters. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. If I had a choice of watching a you know a UFC pay per view or some big boxing match, I'd take the UFC. It's a lot more you know, entertainment. Bang for yeah, your buck. Bang for your buck. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, adjustable popcorn section for uh, for different sizes. What? Oh, oh, oh for uh, for, for this, uh, yeah, yeah, for the uh, you can expand it or de uh, de uh, de spend. I I I love uh, and also you should always have the option of putting the butter in the middle. Uh, that's what the Balboa does. Uh, uh, in, in in certain places, you can tell them, hey, can you put butter uh, in the middle of the popcorn and put it on the top? That's that's premium right there man any any place that does that that's a yeah because uh, some of these theaters they have the the pump for the butter so far away from like regal does that you can't do that i don't think yeah. they pump the butter at, at the when they serve it to you they're like oh yeah you can help yourself over there yeah yeah no, yeah, i'm like, sitting through sifting through fucking yeah, quarter but, of greasy yeah. ass popcorn at the top yeah dry all, ass the, popcorn all the money I did, I did the trick with um, putting a straw in the middle of it and like pouring the butter through the straw to get <laughs> slowly pulling it up. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I tried that. It, it, it kind of worked. I got I got to work on my technique, but <laughs> it's a um, uh, you know that's a Shark Tank convention, right? <laughs> <laughs> middle, yeah, I could get like a funnel thing. Yeah, hey, we'll work on it. We're working on it. Uh, all right, all right. So let's uh, let's uh, jump into uh, yeah. This is gonna be doing a short one today. I love it. Uh, so yes, yeah, jump into the pool. Uh, the pool list is uh, stuff you picked up, uh, you watched, listened to, bought uh, something. Uh, you know, uh, something that pissed you off, something that made you happy. Uh, Ricky, what's a, you got a pull list this week? Yeah, so I got two things. Uh, started watching Night Court, and I am more than pleasantly surprised. Yeah, it's, it's fun. Uh, yeah, it's got like the it's got. It feels like Night Court. Yeah, it has the heart, you know, same heart. That and I think that's that's one thing I think they've been missing from in sitcoms these days is the lesson, and I'm starting to get my Harry Anderson fucking lesson from Abby Stone now. Uh, so I I I dig her, Melissa Roush. She's 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 pretty she's pretty ill uh, as Abby. She's got her own demons, but you could see that she's definitely like the way they wrote her. She's her father's daughter. Yeah, I like her uh, better. Like I, I liked her. Uh, she was kind of annoying on Big Bang, but I, I still liked her. But uh, like, yeah. I like her. She's kind of like this character. Yeah, like, she's more. Um, uh, I don't know, like less, uh, less annoying. I guess I don't know. <laughs> less, uh, you well, know. She's kinda... yeah. She's she's less Bernadette. Like, like the character is written just weird. Like this is a way better, way written, way better than than Bernadette's yeah. character. How many episodes uh, are you? I've, I've I'm caught up. Yeah, I, I ended up binging like five of them. I only yesterday. seen uh, yeah, I only saw uh, I only watched the first two. So, uh, John LaRoquette's John LaRoquette. Yeah, he's a he's all time. He's he's, he's he's great. Just so hearing good. his voice is fucking. Yeah, dope. I kind of yeah, I, I kind of wish they had some more. Uh, uh, you know, like Marsh, uh, Martha Washington still around. Uh, Bulls. Marshall around. Warfield. Marshall, yeah, Marshall Warfield still around. She's a she's like doing stand up and shit. She's like still doing stand up out there. Oh, dude, I love Gergs. Gergs is fucking hilarious. The uh, the bailiff, she's fucking great. 
The one uh, that- Krista, loving Night Court. Great job. Uh, Renee, I like Bull from Night. Oh, yeah, he has to, Bull has to show up at some point, right? I I'm hoping so. That. Yeah. I know they're like up there in age, but you know, I want to see some more. Uh, Krista, the actors are doing so well uh, so far for Night Court. Uh, I love Korgs. Gertz, Gertz is great. She's yeah, that's the that's the bailiff. She's fucking yeah. awesome. Uh, I don't. I, the one person I'm having a problem with is the the attorney, the the the, the, the DA at night. The, yeah. the chick. He kind of. Yeah. She's very quick with everything that she says, and like if it, it sounds like she's popped up on coffee and cocaine, <laughs> and just everything else. Uh, she's a little bit annoying. I guess she's supposed to be. But I, I hope yeah. she fucking chills out going forward. And who's it like? Just like uh, the first couple seasons of Night Court, they had a lot of turnaround. A lot of people came in and out uh, there. So may, maybe we'll pull yeah. some uh, people out and uh, replace them with some other actors. And th- those will be the, yeah. you know. the probably the Billy movement. You know, they replaced yeah. Billy with uh, with fucking Marky Post afterwards. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Billy was fine, but yeah, Marky Post was fucking. Marky Post is great. Yeah. Her character was super fucking badass. I, I love that fucking when she has, she goes, I just have something more to say. Then she opens her mouth and she fucking lets out a huge fucking burp. <laughs> her mouth. Yeah. I mean, their folks are saying that they, you know, they've watched an old night court and they don't get it. I'm like, yeah, because it's, it's a different time back then. Yeah. They tried to teach you some kind of value, not just fucking make you laugh with a fucking, you know, somebody just yeah. farted. And yeah. And I, you know, like every up. show is like a, nowadays it's like, a mockumentary style, like kind of TV show. It's like, you know, this is a throwback. And just uh, that's why I kind of enjoyed uh, that 70s show, that 90s show, because it's, it's a throwback. Going to the second thing. So I'm been watching that 90s show. Um, it's pretty good. Yeah. The, the characters kind of, they grew on me. Like, they I, feel, I they, no, they, they feel, they feel right. Yeah. They feel right. It's the thing is, I grew up in the 90s, man. We, we all grew up in the 90s. 95, 90, in, in 1995, I'm a junior. I'm a junior in high school, so I can hear the stuff like like the hairstyles, like they all resonate. Like these all, they all feel like people I went to school with. Yeah, you know, like her with her Oshkosh bagosh and her fucking you know Sarah plain and tall like haircut. <laughs> it 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 feels right. Kitty Kitty and Red, fucking awesome. Yeah, so they haven't, they haven't missed a beat. Like, I need to I needed to watch another couple episodes because i was hoping i was like all right so the first episode was really funny and i was just hoping that it wasn't the nostalgia of having eric and donna around yeah because now this cast has to carry it and they have to hold it and yeah it's it fucking it just feels yeah. it feels right yeah it feels it like feels right for like, being that 90s show it feels like it's a continuation of that so it feels like it, it belongs in that you know it's not like just some like gritty re- reboot or some like you know they're trying to modernize it or whatever it just feels it, like it's, a, it's like oh we just we stopped filming for a couple of years now we were, we're filming again you know kind of like that 80s show that felt weird like yeah that was out felt, of place yeah that was that, was, that felt so out of place because they were just using like 80s tropes who whoever wrote the show from what i'm seeing even from you know them like doing the whole clerks i bet they were a big fan of clerks yeah like they they get the personality because clerks was that's the same time period that's the 90s these are 90s guys you know the way they talk uh yeah i I just i think it's it's a pretty good show so yeah i was i was afraid i wasn't gonna like it based on the the trailer and everything i was just like yeah it looks like they're going nostalgia and i'm a guy who like loves nostalgia i just don't want nostalgia to be done for nostalgia's sake willow yeah. um yeah yeah but it's 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 a fun show it's a yeah fun show. all right I, I dug it i thought it was good uh, yeah i'm looking forward to the next uh next uh next season uh lower cat is night court it wouldn't be the same without him i you know you say the he same carries the show without harry it, it's it's hard man like to like it man if harry was still alive I, like i would i would love to see him like involved but it sucks man. we lost we lost a lot of the good like we lost you know the character of abby's she's really good though man yeah. i you 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 get a lot of hairy moments with her and, she, and they're like writing they're like legit hairy moments i'm like wow she's talking like harry's so hairy she's, she's like her dad she's like her dad uh, krista finished that 90s show great job looking forward to next season yeah they renewed it for another it's gonna be longer too next season so that's good uh Let's see. Uh, yeah, I binge watch Night Court on Satellite Channel. Hello, <laughs> from yeah. I, I'm starting to think that Night Court might be like 
might be it's starting to get up there like in in the list of how how much i love a sitcom like a yeah. true sitcom yeah i i, re- I rewatched the the whole series uh it's great a while ago. it's so good man it's one of my favorite shows of all time uh krista bro bro bro, bro. <laughs> yeah i like their i like their little friendship man that's uh, the, the two dudes very reminiscent ray very reminiscent <laughs> bro bro uh, <laughs> i got some cologne really <laughs> we could get that on you <laughs> I, was, I was like no shit like whoever wrote this they get us uh yeah cheap back then. <laughs> uh all right uh what do i uh what do i got oh i got my owl figure in uh, it's fucking great. It's, it's going to be, uh, up, it might be coming up as, a uh, one of the figures of the year. I, I think <laughs> it's, it's fucking awesome. Comes with a little cat sandwich, uh, yeah. a nice Gordon Shumway. He comes with a bunch of stuff. He has his little, um, his little ham radio. He comes with, he has like, uh, yeah, the accessories are great. A little cat sandwich. Who's that by? Uh, this is NECA. NECA? Little of, yeah. A little thing that comes with a little thing of popcorn, like the little details, a uh, little details on the popcorn are fucking great. Uh, you can see the popcorn. Um, I love popcorn, so it sits on my desk. Uh, but yeah, it's like a great figure, man. Yeah, it comes with the shirt he wore in the cartoon, so he's rocking the shirt uh, from the cartoon, so you can take that off him if you want. Uh, it looks great, man. I'm, I, I kind of want to get like a little '80s diorama, like get a little, uh, <laughs> have him like a little room for him, like so I can like put him in, uh, put like some video the living room that they have. I have a little art- uh, uh, Atari like little mini uh, thing, so I'm going to set up a little TV and shit, like make a little room for him. <laughs> I'm going to try to work on that at some point. Um, uh, yeah, so yeah, I, sp- I bought so many figures this last like, week. I uh, went to East Bay Comic Con. Uh, a lot of fun. I hung out with the Maddie Ice and Michelica and uh, uh, no Hondo. Hondo was late. Um, but uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, the cast of the Warriors, uh, most of the cast of the Warriors were there. Uh, the oh, movie, no shit. The, yeah, the movie The Warriors. Swan? Let me see. Who was, let me see. Who was there? Uh, Go Cheese was there. Oh, um, nice. Uh, who else? Uh, the ch- let me see. Hold on. I'll bring it up. Uh, anyway, I'm trying to remember who was actually there. Um, Swan, uh, no Swan, Swan. No Swan. uh, Luther was there, Cleon, Cleon missed it. Uh, Vermin was there, Coaches was there. I love Coaches, dude. He's been in so many fucking like little things. Uh, who's the other one? Was he was, there. he was in Quicksilver. He was in, I'm not sure if he was in V. Uh, was Roger? I think Roger Hill was there too. Cyrus, yeah. And who's the chick that was there? She was, uh, was it one of the Lizzie's? Uh, Dee Dee Burr, yeah, one of the Lizzie, Lizzie, Lizzie Eleven or some shit. I think she was there too. So, yeah, about about four or five, about five, six of them were there. So, it was cool. Um, yeah, Bo, Bo got his ve- uh, Warriors vest signed by a bunch of them, so <laughs> he was very happy about that. Did he have a Warriors vest, or did he just make? No, yeah, make I fun? think they bought they bought it at a show. I think a, a little while back. So, yeah, it's a, didn't have any of the orphans. None of the orphans were there. Oh, one of the orphans was there. What the fuck? Oh, that? so it was probably that. Uh, Which one? Paul Greco. Who was it? He was the, the, the weird. Uh, kind of looks like Doug Jones. <laughs> Doug Jones a little bit more meat. Uh, yeah, one of the fucking orphans were there. Uh, with you, uh, 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 Jerry Hewitt, uh, the baseball fury was, was oh, there. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think was well, he wasn't the. I think he might have been the main one on the, at the at the forefront. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, Cole walking around, I didn't get any sign for that. I, I like the Warriors. I'm not uh, like uh, needing autographs or anything to meet him or anything, but it was cool to see him. Uh, you know, chilling. So just said hello to him. Uh, um, I would have loved to meet those guys, man. Yeah, uh, I love that. I love that movie. Yeah, I, you know, it was a great movie. Uh, one dude I heard overheard him talking. He was talking about the game. He's like, "Oh, it's, it's great. You know, people have been uh, you know, in the game. I get killed. Like, you know, people are killing me all around the world, man. <laughs> you know, like over and over to this day. <laughs> He's all like proud of that fact. Like, <laughs> you get you're, you're immortalized, man. Um, yeah. Let's see. Uh, yeah. What else? Um, yeah, East Bay Con was cool. That was a lot, a lot of fun. Uh, what else did I watch? I, found, I, found, I finished IT, uh, IT Crowd. You need to watch that. 
uh, fucking Matt Berry is so fucking hilarious in that. Uh, it's it's uh, you can see little hints of Laszlo uh, Laszlo <laughs> on there. Uh, he's full, he's it's only like six season of uh, four seasons, and they're like six episodes each. So it's a quick watch. Definitely watch it. It's uh, highly recommended. Uh, I'm I'm I'm, I'm bummed. I, I like I was so so late to the party on that one, but it's a, it's really good. Uh, and what else? Uh, yeah, I think that's it for me. I think. Uh, did you play the uh, the Harry Potter yet? Is it out? Yeah. Oh shit! It is February? Huh. Holy fuck! I gotta download it right now. <laughs> uh, well, you're I'm, playing, I'm playing Mass Effect. I'm in the middle of Mass Effect. I probably won't. I probably buy it and I won't start it because I'm I'm uh, still in the middle of another game. Yeah, I hear it's pretty awesome. Yeah, Grand Theft Hogwarts. I'm 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 totally down. <laughs> uh, I, know. And oh, I can't wait. I now got to go download it. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So hopefully, uh, I'll be playing that soon. Yeah, fucking February. Holy shit. Yeah, I know, right? Sorry, fucking it's February. Fucking sorry, February 11th, man. <laughs> We're already fucking almost halfway through February, man. Uh, for some reason, it felt like November because I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, Harry Potter. I, I I hear it mentioned. I hear it like advertised. I'm just like, oh, okay. Like they're really pushing it now. Like yeah, it already came out. Yeah. Uh, Renee, uh, nice Cornet Theater backdrop. That was uh, 19, uh, 1977. All the stores up to attack clones and closed down one week before Revenge of the Sith came out. Yeah, I was bummed. Yeah, they couldn't see Revenge of the Sith on a on the, to uh, finish it off. You yeah. fucking stupid daikinis. <laughs> Those uh, the, the, what was it? Was it now the Age uh, uh, Institute on Aging? Is what yeah. It is. Yeah, which is yeah, they tore it down those bastards. They tore it down. I miss are, are they trying to keep us alive longer? Because that would be worth it. Because, but if you're just, I don't know what you are. <laughs> yeah, you better find that cure, man. You need that stuff from uh from Avatar that the whale the whale juice. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's so fucked up. Uh, yeah. Ahab, he's coming back. <laughs> oh yeah, he's definitely coming back. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see. Uh, any hidden gems for us this week? Negative. Hidden gems. Right. So we yeah we're we're doing we're a nice short one. Frankie special. Yeah, uh, Frank <laughs> Frank special for sure. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, go uh like subscribe to the video, do all that stuff. Uh, any final words before we get out of here in the super uh super short show? Like and subscribe. <laughs> Like and subscribe, guys. Yeah, Please. check out. Uh, yeah, we'll hopefully be back next week with better news. This is kind of a shit news week, so hopefully we uh, we have yeah, some better. Uh, I didn't, didn't want to talk about just the photo with the you know Ezra Miller in the back cave shit, but yeah. Well, actually, no. We'll, we'll have plenty to talk about Super Bowl. We'll have a, a yes, a we of, will. We'll have trailer. an actual trailer. We'll have trailer. How many uh, trailers uh, are dropping tomorrow? Uh, I don't know. I haven't heard, but there's gonna be a few. So. Yeah, there's right. uh, yeah. So we'll we'll we have okay. super long so, shit to talk. Oh, so cool. Yeah. We have a, we have a subject next week. <laughs> yeah. We have news. I we think that's probably, why, that's probably why the, this the, this couple last couple weeks have been kind of short on news because they're trying to save all their uh, save their wad for the Super Bowl. Straight was the big drop this week. Yeah, that was it. And AMC shitty ticket prices. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, next week we'll have a review of the the trailers. All the trailers that are going to drop next week. So that should be fun. All right, cool. All right, let's get out of here. Uh, you guys have a good Saturday and uh, be safe and uh, like and subscribe, fun. guys. Like the end subscribe. subscribe. Yeah, yeah I don't, we don't hold shit back. And we'll get a review of uh, Rick's uh, chicken wings next week too. Lemon pepper. I don't know. I might do. <laughs> I might do. A, I might do a couple of them. I don't know. Hey. Oh. I don't know. All right, man. All right. All right. We'll see you guys next week. Like, subscribe, all that cool stuff. Bye. Adios, folks.